It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the New York Jets and the Denver Broncos. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. An absolutely perfect fall afternoon for football. And we are under bright blue Colorado skies and in power field at Mile High in Denver. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC as it'll be the New York Jets taking on the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gordon here in Denver, joined by Charles Davis as CD. The Broncos are looking for a turnaround here in 2023. Coming off a five-win season and a last-place finish in the AFC West, but this doesn't feel like a last-place team. Nor to me, because when you look at them on offense, loaded with skill position players at wide receiver and running back and then flip it over to the defensive side of the ball and they can compete with anyone they make it tough to run your offense but meanwhile for the Jets you know even putting the quarterback situation aside this is an exciting time for them right now yeah they were just seven and ten last year I get that but they're building a roster that's potentially got some future stars involved they certainly are remember Going 7-10, they were 7-3 and three at one point last season, and they finished the year with the offensive and defensive rookies of the year. So you know that this roster is really on the rise. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by Zach Wilson, former second overall pick, now in his third season out of BYU. And we all know the scouting report on him. He can attack the field at all levels with a very strong arm and make big time plays off schedule. We also see a player with confidence and swagger. We see a guy who knows how to lead a team, who knows how to compete and wants to be great every time he hits the field. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play and it's second down. Now Wilson, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Here's Wilson to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We're scoreless after one. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Here's Wilson. And able to find Alan Lazard. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now second and three. Wilson. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 42. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Throwing again here, Wilson. Steps away to his left. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
Opted to run for it. The decision of Goodwin picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Now a second and two. From the gun, it's Wilson. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now it's Wilson. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Wilson. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. It'll go down as a gain of 6, and it's second down. And that extra yardage makes this upcoming field goal attempt much more manageable. Agreed, because when you talk to defensive coordinators, they always tell us the 35-yard line on our side of the field, that's the line we guard the most aggressively, because once they get there, they believe they're in field goal range. So a nice drive on the road. You come in, you take the ball down, you get three points. Yeah, points are a must on an opening drive, right? So they moved it down efficiently, got it done. I think that bodes well for their chances moving forward in this one. Four seconds, all that remain here in this first half as the kick gets away. So we've reached halftime. All we have to show for the first half, a lone field goal. 3 nothing. our score. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. If you missed the first half, there's not much to get you caught up on. Just the lone field goal accounting for the entirety of the scoring. A 3-0 game to this point, as both defenses have been strong so far. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. 
Rush coming, and he's taken down. John Franklin Myers, the one in there to drop him. You don't confuse Franklin Myers with the All-Pros of the Jets defense, but don't underestimate his role on the team. Dependable, big body, and a little pass rush chops, too. 11 sacks over the last two seasons. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play, so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. They'll come up now. This is second and long. Now Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Throwing now is Wilson. He'll find its tight end. It's Adam Troutman. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Now second down and a few inches. Wilson to throw. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here's Wilson. Pass taken in big tight end and he will have a Broncos first down and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. And the screen unsuccessfully dropped it. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On second down, Williams. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And now the timeout call. So five seconds left. And a field goal would send us to overtime. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. 
And this one is right through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. This hasn't exactly been a battle of one touchdown after the other. Quite the opposite. But at 3-3 now here in the fourth, it's been an entertaining game considering just two field goals. Yeah, is it really a football game now or are we watching baseball? This feels like a pitcher's <laughs> duel, doesn't it? Nice and tense on the edge of your seat. Have you been scoring this one? A lot of, a lot of strikeouts and ground balls in this one. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. Well, now how about this return? So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dime. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles, because my palms sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself, but let's face it, our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? Well, throw on first down with Wilson. It's complete, Lazard. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and six. Now a late signee let go by Minnesota in June. It's Dalvin Cook. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. One overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. They go play action with Wilson. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field, was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Second and ten. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And that's incomplete. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face, good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. Now Wilson. That is caught. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Defensively now, the ultimate challenge. Of course, the ball gets in the end zone. This thing's over. And I remember my coach has always talked about in goal line situations, and now you're in overtime where they have to keep them to three points. Otherwise, this thing is done. Win your individual battle within the framework of the team defense. 
beat that guy across from you and make a play. I expect him to attack on defense and not sit back. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. To throw again is Wilson. Looking middle, and that's complete. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now it's Wilson. Touchdown, Jets! CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you get a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's got to happen right now. Or very lights quickly. out. <laughs> or exactly right. Turn them out. That play's over. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Throwing is Wilson. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. Oh, it's intercepted. That'll seal it. Sauce Gardner picks it off, and he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. A costly mistake here at OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician, to, to ring that down for us. That's typically how coaches and teams feel about it. You throw one, you likely cost yourself the game. Well, obviously, Charles, this was by 